Good morning. I'm Jane Bardsley, and I've come to say greetings to you today. The church is not the steeple. The church is not a resting place. The church is a people. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. Hi there, church family. I am so glad and enjoying the idea of coming to say hello to you. I focus in my mind and say, I know where this person sits. I see this person in a pew. I see this person ushering. I see these people at Sunday school class, at coffee time. It is so wonderful to know that we are all part of a family, that we are together. Good, good day.
in the call to worship. Clap your hands, all people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord Most High is to be feared, a great ruler over all the earth, who subdued people under us and nations under our feet, who chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom God loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our ruler, sing praises. For God is the ruler of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. God reigns over all the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God, who is highly exalted. Eternal God, whom the generations have worshipped through the gift of music, accept our praise to you in the sound of our music, which we lift this day to your glory. Grant that our music may be a blessing to all who worship today, and that they may be consecrated to you, whose sound has gone out through all the earth, and whose words to the end of the world. Let our music be so joy joined to your holy word that your glory may surround us and empower us for the service to which you call us in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Sadness, 
The scripture for today is from the letter of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with all the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know which is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put the power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. He has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church which is the body, the, fulfill, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Please join with me in the affirmation of faith. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is the true and living God, worthy to receive glory and honor and power. He created all things. By his will, they existed and were created. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. All things came into being through him. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. In him, all things in heaven and on earth were created. He himself is before all things, and in him, all things hold together. Being in the form of God, he emptied himself, he took the form of a slave, and was born in human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself. He became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. He was buried, he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. God also highly exalted Jesus. He gave him the name that is above every name. God has put all things under his feet. He made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. Through Jesus, God will bring him, those who have died. As all die in Adam, so we will all be made alive in Christ. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. God.
God's power working in us. God can do much, much more than anything we can ask or imagine. Ephesians 3, 20. Good morning. Uh, we're here in the choir room. Uh, John Wesley, uh, the founder of the Methodist Movement, and me uh, to share with you about Mr. Wesley's directions for singing. Most of you know, uh, maybe some of you don't, that John Wesley was the founder of the Methodist Movement, and his brother Charles uh, was the author of a number of the hymns in our hymnal. Is that not right? That is correct. Last year, uh, we erroneously gave uh, credit to uh, John for those hymns. So uh, we wanted to straighten that out, didn't we? Didn't we? Well, I did. All right, where do you find the directions for singing? Uh, they're found at the very beginning of the hymnal, number seven in Roman numerals, and uh, there are seven of them. The first one is, learn these tunes before you learn any others. Afterwards, learn as many as you please. Number two, sing them exactly as they are printed here, without altering or mending them at all. And if you have learned to sing them otherwise, unlearn it as soon as you can. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. Number three, sing all. See that you join with the congregation as frequently as you can. Now, John, uh, you do know we're in strange times and um, we can't all sing together like we usually do, but we've got to practice, right? We don't want to forget. So it says, you say, let not a slight degree of weakness or weariness hinder you. If it is a cross to you, take it up and you will find it a blessing. Number four, in true 18th century language, sing lustily and with good courage. Beware of singing as if you were half dead or half asleep. Now, the good news for right now is if you do fall asleep, I can't see you but let's not get in the habit of that. But lift up your voice with strength. Be no more afraid of your voice now, nor more ashamed of its being heard than when you sung the songs of Satan. I'm sure you remember those songs. Sing modestly, number four. Do not bawl so as to be heard above or distinct from the rest of the congregation. Now, if you're by yourself, uh, it may not matter. If you're with some other folks, you can decide if someone is bawling and needs to pipe it down. Do not bawl so as to be heard or above or distinct from the rest of the congregation that you may not destroy the harmony, but strive to unite your voices together so as to make one clear melodious sound. And won't it be a great day when we can do that together? Number six, sing in time. Whatever time is sung, be sure to keep with it. Do not run before nor stay behind it, but attend close to the leading voices and move therewith as exactly as you can. And take care not to sing too slow. This drawling way naturally steals on all who are lazy, and it is high time to drive it out from us and sing all our tunes just as quick as we did at first. And finally, number seven, above all, sing spiritually. Have an eye to God in every word you sing. Aim at pleasing him more than yourself or any other creature. In order to do this, attend strictly to the sense of what you sing and see that your heart is not carried away with the sound, but offered to God continually. 
so shall your singing be such as the Lord will approve here and reward you when he cometh in the clouds of heaven. Now we're going to enjoy a little bit of music from Rick Addison on the saxophone and then get your pipes ready uh, and your spirits ready to go uh, and we're going to sing together.
Today, as we come to a, a moment of uh, intentional prayer, I know that there are many things, many people and circumstances on our minds and in our hearts. And I want to invite you as I offer up uh, phrases of invitation to take the time following each phrase to lift up uh, what is in your heart and on your mind. And when I pray the phrase, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to respond with the phrase, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Together, let us pray first for the people of this congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray together for those who suffer and those in trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray together for the concerns of this local community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray together for the world, its peoples, and its leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray now for the church universal its leaders, its members, and its mission. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now let us pray in communion with the saints. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Today I want to say thank you to a number of folks who uh, help us to enjoy uh, music and to worship through music uh, throughout the year. I want to say thank you to Michael Malott, our director both of the Chancel Choir and of the Children's Choir, uh, for all of the leadership he brings. I want to say thank you to uh, the choir itself uh, for all of the beautiful music they provide and all that they've done, particularly in this time of uh, physical distancing, so that we can see and hear uh, the faces and the voices of our choir most every Sunday. Uh, thank you so much for that, and thanks to our kids who have done the same. Uh, we love you, and we're so glad to see you and hear you, and we're grateful for you. Uh, I'm also grateful that uh, Michael is the one who uh, does so much to put all of the pieces together so that we hear an anthem on Sunday. He says uh, the easy answer to the question, well, how do you do that, is um, it's magic. Uh, but there is a longer answer, and he'll give that to you, but it requires a lot of work putting all the video and the audio and all the pieces together so that indeed we hear one clear, melodious sound in the words of John Wesley, and we're so very grateful for that. I'm grateful to Lauren Malott, who is the skill and uh, the labor behind our worship videos. Uh, she's the editor, and she's the one who, when you say, wow, that really looks good, how did somebody do that? How did it flow so well? Well, Lauren's the one who does that, and we're so grateful for that, as well as the fact that she is the beautiful voice behind our hymns. So thank you so much to Lauren for all that she does. I want to say thank you to Elizabeth Halby, our music director, our uh, bell choir director, uh, who provides uh, leadership to our bell choir. I want to say thank you to the bell choir. Uh, it's not really possible to bring them together uh, in a way that we can make a video, but we're grateful for the beautiful music they provide throughout the year, and we're grateful for Elizabeth and her leadership. I want to say thank you to Emily Howell, who uh, assists with our children's choirs, and also to um, Reverend Harry Tingley, our organist, who provides music, beautiful music for us, uh, every Sunday. We're so grateful for all of you. I hope I didn't forget anybody, and if I did, I hope that you will forgive me. We're so grateful for all of you, and uh, we say thank you today. Thanks to all of you, because your giving makes all of this possible. And so uh, those of you who are wanting to give, maybe uh, for the first time, folks who might be watching and say, I want to support that ministry financially, uh, you can send uh, a gift to uh, us in the mail, 2206 4th Street in Charleston, or you can go to the website in the pull-down menu. There's a place there where you can give online as well. It is your giving that is an expression and a reflection of the generosity of God, and it is uh, indeed our music that blesses and glorifies God and lifts us up for the sake of serving others in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you all so much. Uh, now I want you to see and hear a word from Jeff Ashley about our uh, drop-offs for community agencies uh, who need our assistance, and uh, thanks to all of you who are participating in that as well. Here's Jeff. We're not, we are back, and we are collecting a lot of great stuff for local charities. Hurry up, you want to come down in a jiffy. Uh, don't go against the tide. And remember, you have everything to gain and nothing to lose. See you soon. We'll be here.
Would you please join me in the prayer of dedication? Great music and little birds remind us of your majesty. Huge sums of money and a widow's coin are both honored when given to tell your love, your justice, and your mercy. Receive these offerings as signs that we remember that you are greater than our music or our money, for you are the root of it all. Most of all, we marvel that you love us. We are saying thank you, God, as we present this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always here and everywhere you go. Amen.
Joe!